welcome back to Mixing Music with DK. I'm your host, DK. Yeah, today we're going to talk about something super short, super simple. Um, I love having these short episodes. It's easier for me. It's easier for you. Um, But today I want to talk about maintaining and keeping motivation. Now, this is a topic that I really love because... Um, I am the type of guy I've, again, I've said it in the past. I have terrible ADHD, so I'm either hyper-focused or not. I get really motivated at times and then I totally lose motivation. And I'm quite impressed with myself that I've been able to do music and this for so long. Usually I've moved on to my next big like obsession, right? Currently I'm obsessed with, uh, Overwatch. Um, and if you play Overwatch on PC, hit me up on Instagram at DK Mixes. But uh, <laughs> um, especially if you're good, if you have a high SR. Anyway, we're done about talking about Overwatch. Um, and uh, what we, what I learned about motivation is that it truly just comes and goes. Um, there's no way to keep 100% motivation all the time. And we just got to embrace that fact. If you're really like struggling emotionally because I I keep losing motivation and like I'm not supposed to do that everybody else around me is still going strong no everybody around you has ups and downs with motivations you are not alone in this Um, I've had a time in my life where I was a year and a half a slump like because I write songs like I consider myself a songwriter sure I mean I tried not I'm not not making big bucks with it like I just do it for fun But there was a year and a half slump where I was just not motivated to write any music. And that killed me. And that killed my business because I realized like, oh, if I'm going to do this, I thought I told myself I'm going to do this. I need to do it 100% of the time. And I can't do that right now. I'm not, I'm too much low. I'm too much on the low. And uh, I realized, wow, like over time, everybody kind of gets low. And what's important is that you're consistent no matter how small it is. Um. So first off, I wanted to let you know that you should be doing what you love. And if you really love this, um, it should be a little bit easier to stay consistent. And But at the same time, even if you really love this and you, from the get-go, have always wanted this to be your career, your life, your everything, there's still going to be times when you're less motivated to do it, where you want to go on a Game of Thrones binge streak instead of going to the studio. There's going to be that time. Um, And that's okay. I'm not saying that binging TV shows is okay, because sometimes that is a little bit of a waste of time, but giving yourself a mental break is okay. I'm a big fan of promoting mental health uh, in the studio and in music. I feel that musicians and anybody in the music industry kind of struggles with this, because we are all creatives that need words of affirmation and yet we don't get them at a lot of times because we're also prideful musicians that feel like we deserve credit instead of giving credit and i like this is one thing that we should all realize as humans as people we need to take emotional breaks sometimes now i'm not saying drop into the black and go totally mia for a long period of time no what i'm saying is you should take at least one day a week to just not work. I mean, you, I, for me, that's Sunday, right? Again, I've talked about how religious I am, but that's like one commandment that I'm like really, really blessed to keep just because I'm so glad God like asked us like not to work on Sundays, you know, have that day of rest. Like, yo, that's not, that's not a commandment. That's like a blessing to me because that one day a week is a day to really recharge um, and it takes a lot, it took, it's taken me a long time to finally figure that out. Um, it, there's a, there needs to be a lot of courage. I need to have a lot of courage to not open my emails on Sunday and to not reply to texts that are business related. Um, I mean, unless they really need to happen. Um, but like try to just stay with my family, um, and be lazy and recharge now, I think that if you're lazy, then you kind of stay lazy and it's kind of hard to get out of being lazy. But I mean the sense of like being lazy and recharging. Like if that means taking a nap, taking a nap. Um, if that means you just like, for some reason, for me, it's like a lot of times I just need to watch one episode of my favorite anime. Just like just one episode. That's all I need. And not because I want to know what's happening. It's because for me, like watching stuff with my ADHD, I can like hyper focus on what I'm watching. And as I hyper focus, this is really weird. You may not relate to this, but as I hyper focus, I kind of lose stress and that, or you may relate to that. 
And I love that. And I need to have that. That's like part of my me time. That's like part of my 20 minute ritual at the end of the day is I watch an episode of an anime with my wife uh, for the sake of uh, closing down and just relieving stress. Um, And something to look forward to every night as well, you know, spend time with my wife a little bit. Uh, Bless her heart. And uh, she she appreciates it as well. I think my family appreciates it. I try also on top of that. I try once a week. Currently, it is about Tuesday or Thursday mornings. I try to take my wife out on a date. And because my baby is 10 months old and I only have one, um, we usually take our baby with us. And we take him to the zoo or to, we go to the zoo or to the, like this, like, pup, it's called the puppy barn, which is basically this really clean, really uh, aesthetic, really awesome uh, touching like petting zoo but for dogs kind of thing uh but they do a really good job it doesn't it's not horrible at all it's very ethical and my son just loves animals and just like laughs hey i don't know the way that they move how fluffy they are i don't know what it is but something triggers him to just laugh and that is so stress relieving to me you know seeing my wife with a smile and my son laughing and having a smile like that those things relieve stress for me and kind of help me stay motivated. Uh, I mentioned before that as you kind of get lazy, you kind of go into slumps. So this is a little bit of the psychological things, psychological thing. It is easier to keep going when you are going. Um, it's harder to keep going once you are completely stopped. So um, if you are in a total slump, take small steps and find your way slowly back to doing little bits at a time Maybe not, maybe not too much. Um, there's also some psych- psychological data that backs up the fact that um, people have a hard time just quitting cold turkey. You know, I mean, some personality types can do that really well. Um, but if you if you want to kind of get back into the motivation and you've been in a slump for a while, um, take your time. Um, uh, there's a uh, there's a book that I read about overcoming addictions that that I really liked um I think it's the 12 steps of addiction recovery something like that um and I didn't really have an addiction at the time it was more for because I wanted to take getting rid of my bad habits really seriously like to this day I struggle with biting my nails I'm trying to quit that so even when I'm trying to do that I kind of go through the steps of these 12 habits you know these 12 steps of breaking bad habits um it's really great Um, and one of the things that this habits book says that I think we can relate to is, um, the way we look at relapsing or in our case, kind of going back into the lazy slump after trying a little bit, you know, some, some people may relate in the sense that, um, I was doing good running on the treadmill every day and then I stopped, you know, or I was going to the gym every day and I stopped, or I was making music every day and then I stopped and I kind of go in and out of that. One of the things about relapsing um, is the fact that um, the way that relapsing is seen is like, hey, like, dang it, like, a lot of people, if when they relapse back into their bad habits, they realize, like, hey, like, this is a uh, a bad thing. This is really sad. How can you be so weak to get back to where you started? Um, but really, our outlook should be the total opposite. It should be, wow, I've made it this far. I was able to go this far without relapsing and I was able to do it a lot longer than I was last time and I need to pick up my feet and get back on it you know Um, that should be motivation you should turn your relapses into motivation and as well as like an affirmation of way like you can do it you can get out of these bad habits or um, these slumps right and I really do believe that relapses are just a evidence and a piece of evidence that you really can get out of it Um, I mean, you have to be out of it to relapse, right? You have to not be doing whatever habit it is you're trying to break to not relapse or to relapse. Like that's the definition of relapsing. Like you, you weren't doing it and then all of a sudden you did it or you, you were doing it and then all of a sudden you stopped doing it. Right. So that's, that's what it is. I mean, it's a good thing. It's a great thing. Um, and the most important thing about all of this is when you think about relapsing in a positive light and think, wow, like I've made it this far, then you start to realize okay, I have the motivation to try again and to do a little bit better next time, 
right? Because if you said that, dang, I suck, I relapse, I shouldn't have done this, people are going to look down on me, whatever it is. Um, and again, it sounds like we're talking about we're t- like hardcore drugs, but that's not what we're talking about. I mean, if that's your thing, yeah, sure, you need to get out of it. But we're just talking about like, being lazy or whatever bad habits for me biting my nails or for you it might be hey like watching excessive tv i I don't know what it is right but um whatever it is we should be slowly coming out of it and we should use that mentally positive bounce from relapse to into another long streak of getting it right um slowly over time and eventually hopefully it'll become a new good habit of doing or not doing something and that will be replaced over time in the way that your brain works where you're not even tempted to do it anymore I mean that's like that would be an amazing world for a lot of us right Um, that's not the case all the time we still will be tempted to slump and go back to our bad habits but um, I'm just really tired of people thinking that relapsing is a bad thing um, and people being hard on themselves it's not about how many times you fall. It's not about how hard you fall. It's about whether or not you're going to get back up and try again. Um, and I really believe that. And I believe that we all have the strength to do so. One of the small things that I do recommend is having a morning and a nightly routine. I, I have noticed that when it doesn't matter what time you really wake up, a lot of people push, hey, early to early to bed, early to rise. And there's a lot of good things about that. But for our industry, the fact that a lot of us are freelancers and we don't have a set schedule, we set the schedules ourselves. That doesn't matter as much as I believe having a routine throughout the day. Um, Sometimes uh, for me, my morning routine is as I'm getting ready, I'm listening to audiobooks or I'm listening to a podcast or something like that. I'm learning as I'm brushing my teeth. I'm absorbing information. And then at night I watch anime. I spend time with my wife and uh um and w- we go to bed like that's that's kind of just like our nightly routine that's the way my brain wakes up and shuts down um and during the day I also have habits and I have habits that kind of keep my day going um in the morning I'll go into the office usually around 10 a.m. um yeah I'm a late riser I love it I'm going to sleep in cuz I work really late uh and from around 10 a.m. I just hustle and I work until I start to feel hungry for lunch, you know, a little bit, and I go, I go eat lunch. Um, I go home or I go uh, uh, out to eat and or bring a meal or something like that, and then I get back to work, and I'm, like, busy. That's, like, my busy hustling mode right there is, like, right after lunch. And then in the evening, I'll, I'll probably go home for a little bit, um, hang out with my wife, say goodnight to my baby, and, uh, um, and then we'll, I'll go back to the studio. Um, a lot of times, unfortunately, I'm a little bit too busy to go home. Um, I wish I was able to do that a little bit more often. Um, but uh, even then, like, I'm just still struggling through. I need to take breaks, constant breaks throughout the day. And I play video games at the office. I know Leslie Brathwaite does as well. He's told me about that. Um, and that's just one. Of, that's just the way that my mind works. That's the way I think. I just love to take uh, mental breaks to kind of refresh um, and, uh, to kind of get back on the ball. Uh, but the big thing here, the big takeaway is habits. The more often you kind of, um, kind of get into a groove and I'm not saying that you should work on the same songs every day. No, like, like you need to have a system to stay efficient, right? And everybody's system is different and you should have your own system. Maybe your thing is early to bed, early to rise. And that is amazing, right? Um, but for me, that doesn't work. Um, I don't sleep very well, so I make sure that I try to get ample sleep, um, and I try to make sure that I am ready for the next day for what's about to come. Um, sleeping um, and eating, as well as sex, has proven to be the big three things that relieve st- stress from men, um, and I think that they are very important. Um, so spend time with your girlfriend, your wife, um, make them feel loved and appreciated. There's a lot to be said about that. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, sleep well, take naps if you have to. Some people survive better when they sleep less in the evening, but they take more naps during the day, right? If that's your body type, if that's how you work, then do that. Um, stay efficient. Uh, and lastly, uh, eating well. Um, I This is a really bad example, actually, but... 
I tried going vegetarian, um, not vegan, vegetarian. I was about vegetarian for three months. And that was hilarious uh, because I'm not like, sure, we shouldn't be cruel to animals. Like, I, like no humans, like, kill the animals, be cruel to them. Let's hurt them before we eat them. Like, nobody thinks that way. But I wasn't really as motivated by that as much as I was motivated by health and uh, just trying to be healthy and the fact that we don't really need to eat animals. Like, sure, um, that was a little bit of it. Uh, and during that time, I felt really healthy and I felt really good. And I felt really energized. I felt really light in a good way. Um, not like actually lighter. Like if I stepped on the scale, I, would, I wouldn't, I don't know if I changed. But I mean like my body felt light and quick. And my mind felt that way as well. Uh, and that was really awesome for me. And I kind of want to get back onto it again. Maybe I, I'll commit to myself that I will. Um, but the big thing is the fact that your eating habits affects the way that you uh, give and get stressed um, like, t- like remove stress and receive stress. Like if you're not eating well, um, that's a, that might be a factor to why you have a hard time relieving stress and finding motivation. Um, motivation comes in small steps. And if you start getting stuff done in the morning, um, first thing in the morning, you start to really like rewire your brain for the day that today's a day that I'm going to get stuff done. Uh, that's just the way that my brain works. Um, that might be the way your brain works. It might not be. But we all have different ways that we think. And I think that it is important for you to be conscious of that. Uh, that wraps it up for today's episode. Um, thanks for listening. You are awesome. Uh, you are a great mixing engineer. You are appreciated. And you just keep hustling. You just keep hustling. And be mentally healthy. Uh, that's it for today. Stay saucy. One, two, three. This episode of Mixing Music with DK has been brought to you by LaunchPod Media. If you want to start a podcast, make sure to start it right with LaunchPod Media.